what if I told you you can make this amazing chocolate birthday cake without a recipe? No scale, no measuring cups, no measuring spoons. I've seen a lot of fun, no recipe challenges on YouTube, but I wanted to show you how to actually make a delicious, no fail cake without using a precise recipe. All you need is a regular tablespoon and you'll need to know the difference between a heaping tablespoon and a regular tablespoon. This is moist, easy, and perfect for all my chickens who love to eyeball recipes. So we're gonna start out with seven heaping tablespoons of flour. Technically, I am giving you some measurements today, but technically I'm not. We're using a regular tablespoon. There's plenty of leeway. If you add a little more or a little less, it's gonna be okay, as long as you pay attention. Consider this an eyeball cake. We're eyeballing everything today. You'll also need some sugar. I'm doing 10 tablespoons. If you want a sweeter cake, you could do 12. I wouldn't do less than 10 though, because we're also gonna add unsweetened cocoa powder. Three heaping tablespoons to be exact. Add one regular tablespoon of baking powder, not heaping, I said regular. This is gonna be the leavening agent today. I do like to sift the baking powder for some reason. My baking powder is always lumpy. Perfect time to mention if your dry ingredients are lumpy, you do wanna sift those dry ingredients. Give these a quick mix of roux and we're gonna add the wet ingredients. You'll need 16 tablespoons of milk. I'm aware that some extra milk may spill into the bowl. Do not worry, she's easy going. She's not a high maintenance cake. Unless you add a full extra cup of milk, then we have a problem. You'll also need one stick of melted butter. If you live in America, you know exactly what one stick of butter looks like. They sell these by the stick. And if you don't live there, just know you'll need 10 tablespoons. Add two eggs and we're gonna mix everything together. Now this is where you gotta pay attention. We're looking for for a specific kind of batter. Again, we're not looking for anything precise, but we do want to aim for a loose batter. This right here is a bit too stiff. The general rule to remember is that cocoa loves moisture. So if the batter is too stiff, your cake is going to turn out dry. I'm going to add some extra milk, probably five tablespoons, I want to say, but it really depends on your batter, okay? So take a look at your batter, people. Mix this up, and you'll know your batter is ready when this looks like a delicious, loose chocolate pudding. It's just spread out easily. You're going to transfer this batter into buttered, floured, and lined with parchment paper, seven-inch cake pans. Another clear indication that you've made the batter correctly is that, again, the batter spreads out easily by itself in the cake pans. You're going to pop these babies in a preheated oven at 160 degrees Celsius or 320 Fahrenheit for about 18 to 20 minutes. Do the toothpick test. If there's no wet batter, your cakes are ready. We're going to let these cool completely. And in the meantime, we're going to make the frosting. Now, obviously, you can use your favorite frosting, but because we eyeball the cake, it only makes sense to eyeball the frosting as well. This is my nephew's favorite frosting. I brought this cake to my mom's. He devoured it. He went in for seconds and thirds. It's just Nutella and cream mixed together. You do want to heat up the cream in the microwave. Do not scorch it. In another bowl, add your softened Nutella and combine the two together. For best results, you do want to use an electric mixer. Otherwise, it's going to be hell to mix this. You got to remember that that Nutella is really sticky. What I love love about this frosting is that you can really cater it to your liking. For a looser frosting, you can add more cream. And for a sturdier frosting, you can add more chocolate spread. Hey, if you want a really rich, delicious frosting, you could even just do straight up Nutella. Yes, it's rich, but it's delicious. By the way, if you're new to my channel, hello there. Welcome. Make sure to subscribe and click that bell. I post new videos every week. Okay, so we're ready to frost these babies. I did soak the sponge with two to three tablespoons of milk and coffee. Not only does this add great flavor, but it also moistens the cake even more. If you don't like coffee, I'm sorry for you. That's so sad. I'm joking. <laughs> Just use milk. You're going to repeat this as well for your second cake layer. And I'm going to share with you a really nice, easy, quick trick for frosting your cake, even if you're a beginner. Add a thin layer of frosting. Doesn't have to be precise or perfect, but you do want to smooth it out as you know, as much as you can. You're gonna transfer your cake onto a rack, trying to not leave any cake behind, and you're gonna drench the cake in the remaining frosting. I'm using the same exact frosting to get this loose consistency. Like I mentioned before, all I did was just add more heavy cream. That's it. Allow the frosting to, you know, settle and drip off. Shouldn't take more than two minutes. I'm gonna add sprinkles. She's gonna be festive. We gotta celebrate the fact that this was made without a precise recipe. <laughs> this looks absolutely delicious, but we're gonna cut into this baby right away and evaluate this cake together. Considering this was made without precise measurements, this cake is a beauty. It's soft and moist. The slice kind of reminds me of that slice that they have in the super moist box cake mix. It looks very similar. Now, as a pastry chef, I gotta be honest, it's always better to use exact measurements, but I really wanted to show you how it's possible to make a great cake easily without being exact. And it's just as good as any other chocolate cake. Now, obviously, because there's no precise 
precise measurements. It's gonna turn out different every single time, but if you follow those few general rules that I've shown you in this video, it's gonna turn out good every single time.